to the church. Okay, thank you. So, from my right, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Adeyemi Olam Derecho. I am a nurse. I am an analyst also. I am a claim earth analyst. And that is what I do. My name is, praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. My name is Minister Ijo Mamankwa. Ah, when you're talking of a professional in business, call me, call me. <laughs> I'm good for that. I'm good. So other things is not only this one. But let me just hide that in case if you need my attention, you call me. Thank you. All right. Can we have you, ma? Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I'm the operational manager of uh, a Jeremy Branch Wema Bank. Did you hear that? Please stop with me. I work with Wema Bank. I'm yeah. the operational manager. Thank you. Uh, Praise God. Um, Minister Olu Adam Lolo Shibosin. All right, so I'm the HR admin for Truth West Solutions. And we diversify in different things, health, Woo! telecoms, and unlock. So in case, and in case you need job, Sha, God will help us. Amen. Thank Amen. you. You see that we are not small and precious rubies. Yes, the followers of Mama, we are, we are giant people. All right, please, I would like you to Mama mention, to you all missed out something. And it is, I think it is very key that we know our relationship status. Thank you. From my right again, please. Um, I am single. Single. I'm married. Okay. Single. I'm married. All right. Thank you very much. So we go. We have done. We are done with the introductory part. And our first question is: Why do you think it is important for a lady to wait for marriage before having sex? You know. Let me do an introductory. Info, give an introductory information. I hope I'm speaking our mind. There are a lot of people that have this. Um, mindset that it is okay to have sex with, um, before getting married. Why there are some people that are of the school of thought that you should get married before having sex. So what do we all have to say? We have like 60 seconds to answer the questions. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. It's not really good. It's not, it's not good. It's better you keep yourself holy as God has already demanded. Okay. Just keep yourself, and maybe you are still gone in dating or relationship, any relationship you, you are into. Just hold on. Don't rush. You will be tired. You Don't know, rush. when you get married, we tired. Just hold on. Hold yourself. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Thank you. That is what I want to say. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Can we jam our hands together, Boa? Okay, in addition to that, I'll be speaking medically. In addition to you keeping yourself, because that is God's will and mandate for your life. Now, let's come to your medical aspect. Let's come to your health. You sleeping around, you are at the risk of any infection called STI. STI yeah. are not small to treat. STI are not something you treat with 1,000 naira. STI are not something you even treat with 20,000 naira. Sometimes, some of them are continuous, and some of them can actually mar your health for life. So, it's better that you actually keep yourself, not even spiritually and yet medically. So, it's better to just stay on the fire. Until, be, until the wedding night. Thank you. I think that's a bravo. Yes. Jam our hands together for Staola. Mr. Banker, can we have your opinion? Um, except for the fact that it's um, biblical for you to keep yourself to marriage, um, for marriage. Um, I think, like Bishop will say, one things you do in the physical, there's also the spiritual aspect also. So when you're sleeping with somebody, your spirit is merging with that person. It's becoming one. Um, and apart from that, I think spiritual angle. You, it clouds your judgment. There are some things when you're in a toxic relationship, you are supposed to communicate better to resolve an issue. But you just say, okay, let's make it up with sex. And then the issue doesn't get resolved. And so basically, there are things you're supposed to see in the marriage. The sex that you're enjoying is not making you see. Um, something you're supposed to see when you're in a relationship. Because you're having sex, you are, it's, because it's, it's pleasurable, you are, you are feeling that, okay, let me just continue doing it. 
And so, so many decisions you're supposed to make that is right. You don't make the right decisions. Thank you very much, ma'am. Jam right. hands together for her, please. All right, so what I would say, some people will say, if you don't have sex with me, it means you don't love me. You run you. You run you. Run. If they love you, they will love you for who you are. So I would just say, it's not good. And like I asked someone before this section, it's more like you just keeping your dignity right. You having sex before that day, it can, I don't know how I want to put it, but like we rightly heard from people, it can affect, it can affect your future, spiritually, physically, even medically. So I don't know what you can't wait for. Glory to God, I'm married. Like as Sai Joma said, you'll be tired though. So, are you playing? Please, just calm down, eh? Just be calm, eh? Hello, Basuru. Check, bro. Thank you. All right, you. thank you very much. Can we jam our hands together for them, please? We can see that we have intellectuals in precious rubies. And uh. All right, to the next question. Okay, before I go, I would like to say something also that we've had the opportunity to listen to our bishop and our mama on relationship issue. And I could remember, they laid an example for us that throughout their courtship period, they were able to hold themselves together. I think that is enough reason to, if they can do it, we can also do it. Thank you very much. Can we jam our hands together for me now? Uh -huh. All right, on to the next question. This one says, why would you think it's important to pray before, pray about who you marry? Why, do, why would you think it is important to pray about who you marry? Now, I want us to come from two angles. From the angle of being single, as you are single now, why do you think it is important for you, Sister Ola, Sister Banke, that you need to pray before you make your choice of who to marry? And um, for Sister uh, uh, Minister Ijeoma and Minister Damlola, before you got married and after you got married, what were the things you prayed about and what was the outcome thereafter so that it can be a track for us to follow, probably? All right. From my left, please. All right, praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so before I got married, you know, you always see different people claiming, I love you, Tori Toru, because of you, I cannot eat. The, uh, you are the chocolate, and there are something, something, something. Diabetes in you. That line, so, that year. You understand? So all those, all those words, I know women, we easily hear things, and whatever we hear, it makes us to feel some kind of way which we think is the right thing to, the right way to feel. I'm not saying it's not good to have butterflies, but you just need to also know the type of butterfly you are feeling. So we have to know what we are doing. So praying before marriage, I believe is the will of God. It doesn't just jump into something without praying for it. And there are some things that personally I prayed before getting married for and the type of man I want, a God-fearing man, I know people always say, I want a god fearing man, this, this, and that. But at the end of it, some will resort to someone that is not actually it. Because they are in the haste of getting married. Okay, because ah, I'm so, so, so years old. My friends have gotten married. My friends are, have children. They have this, they have that. I would say, don't use someone else's time to, for your own self. Your Ruba will say, Emma Wagola go, she share. My time can be saying 9 o'clock. The same wristwatch. Yours can be saying 9.30. We are both in Nigeria. So don't tell me that because your friends are in so-so-so type of level. Are we going to say Dangote and his colleagues back in school? They are on the same caliber as at now? No. So what I would advise is when you pray, for, when you pray before getting married, I believe it's the will of God because you don't do things without God involving them if not you it will turn to regret for you thank you praise god Hallelujah. um i believe it's always the best way to pray for the guidance of the holy spirit you can never know a person very well no matter how much you stay in the relationship five years six years um a person will never reveal his full self to you before marriage so it's always the best to just depend on the Holy Spirit for guidance to help you choose the right person. Thank you very much, Ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's very, very important for you to pray before marriage. Okay. Because many things that include the marriage is much, are much so. 
What I'm saying is that it's better. You have to pray because it's God will order your steps. If you go with your own wisdom or just your own, like even as uh, James 1 verse 5 says, whoever that lack wisdom <clears throat> shall ask of God. Yeah, so you have to pray. It's from there you will have wisdom. Maybe you heard the person ask of you. Because without prayer, you just, you're, on your, you're, on, you're on your own. Anything can happen. You can see what is really happening, especially in this marriage now. Many things, divorce and other things, it happens. It doesn't mean that maybe you are man of God, you are this, you are, no, 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 no. You have to pray. It's only God with other your steps. And I pray that we, those that never marry, make sure that you pray. So that God will give you the right spouse, the right person you want. It's only God that can give, it's not you. In, uh, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much. So the answer to this question is it is very important that we pray before we marry. We can't just jump into a relationship, maybe because we see the qualities that we want in that. We call it spec. Am I correct? We say that, ah, is my spec tall, dark, and handsome, blah, and blah. What is Dollar field. Okay, it's not even just only spirit field again. It's dollar field. All right, <laughs> I'm hearing a new one. So it is very important for every single in the house, singles rather in the house, please let us, brothers and sisters alike, let us endeavor to pray and pray well and hear God before we go on into a relationship. All right. So I want us to have a very short um, break here. Um, I would be giving an exercise to our panelists. I would say something. And if I say virtue, say smile, you smile. If I say virtue says smile, you smile. If I say virtue says laugh, you laugh. If I say virtue says clap, you clap. But if you don't, if I say clap and you clap, you will be the first, next person to answer the next the next question. You'll be the first person to answer the next question. Do we get it? Yes. So virtue says clap. All right, we so take it again. Please let make it. Let's make it fun. Virtue says clap. We are taking it for the last time. Virtue says clap. Virtue says clap. Virtue says stand up. Virtue says sit. Virtue says stand up. Virtue says sit. Virtue says smile. Virtue says smile. Virtue says stand. Virtue says sit. Virtue says praise God. Praise God. Virtue says smile. Smile. Stola. Yeah, the next one. All right, that was not so funny, but then it was necessary. Okay, on to the next question. I hope we are following, and I hope that we are finding answers to questions that we may have in our hearts. What is the way to choose a life? What is the Christian way to choose a life partner? Okay, so I hope will permit us that our mama also answer this question. So I want it to be strictly married people because of course they've already made choices and um the question says the christian way to make a life to make a choice of a life partner of course we have an answer already that's pray so we want our married people panelists to answer this question all right sister dam i mean sister dam lola please can you go first ma the christian way to make a life choice of partner all right so like we rightly said it's always best to pray and ask for the will of God concerning anything we are doing. Not to talk of the person we want to spend the rest of our lives with. Because what is going on these days, hearing um, married people, either man maltreating the wife to the point of killing the wife, not to talk of, we know the men's own comes out more because they are guys. But there are some females that do the same thing to their husband. So don't let's just think that. Because you will get to a time in your marriage, if you don't pray for the will of God in, in, before getting into it, you will get frustrated by the things your spouse is doing that you think he should not do. That you expected more from your spouse. So I will always say it's always best to pray and keep praying. Because even in that marriage, even in that relationship, you are still praying for God's will over your family. So the best way for a Christian marriage is to keep seeking the face of God in anything you do concerning your relationship. All right. Thank you very much. Minister Ijeoma, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. For me, 
I know that is prayer. We already mentioned prayer. It's important. And it's not that you just you only prayer. No, you can't leave it there. Maybe you, if you are like, like our man of God, you can also meet him, tell him everything that is going about. Maybe the person you want to marry, everything. You can relate it to him or your mentor. Yeah. And again, because, and I know I'm telling you also, it's not just leave it there. Like the Bible says that, the Bible says in Psalm 138, verse 8, it says that God will perfect all that that consign us. So it's only him we, uh, we perfect it. It's not that you just do it. It's God. It's God. And someone you can relate it. And you keep yourself as we say. All that is include. Because at the end, you will enjoy your marriage. You enjoy everything. Even God will be more happier for you in the name of Jesus. Right, so please, I want to add to what she just said regarding speaking to man of God. All right, so it's very important. And even if you are in that relationship and you are having challenges, I believe you can walk up to your man of God and seek for advice, seek for counsel. You don't need third party really in your relationship. Even if you seem you are having issues, you can meet someone that has experienced, someone that has been in, someone that has been married, especially a man of God, that can lead you. When you tell friends your secrets, when you tell friends what is going on in your marriage, at the long run, they will bounce back and use that against you. So I will always advise, aside from praying, that's why when you want to get married, they will always tell you in church that you will do, some people will meet with you, they lead you in how to go counseling and all they will guide you. It's not that churches don't know what they are doing. Even in that counseling, they will ask you, what is it you like about your spouse? What is it you don't like? They're asking all those questions to guide you well. So I will always say it's also good to let people of spiritual mind to know what is going on. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to know the key words there. Um, I'm glad that she made reference to what Sister Ijeoma says. So it's one spirit. She said that from spiritual minds, that's where you should seek counsel. The scripture says that in the multitude of godly counsel, there is safety. So I hope that clears our doubt on who to ask questions. She created, gave us two scenarios. The one of asking our man of God, maybe your mentor, maybe mama, as per this house. The father and the mother that we have in this house that we can seek counsel from is our uh, bishop and mama, resident pastor and deacon. So those are the godly people that God has placed in, our, in that God has placed us in their care to ask such questions. So in the multitude of godly counsel, there is safety. All right, we have. I would like our mama to also make reference, just one or two things on that question. Sorry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I believe counsel is the way to go. You need to seek counsel. Don't um, go into a lifelong relationship without seeking counsel. God will help you and when you seek counsel or you've sought counsel, even when you are going through challenges in that relationship, you can always refer back to those things that have been told you. And I pray that as you commit your ways to the Lord, He will direct your path in Jesus' name. So we have two more questions. I hope two more questions. Is that fine, ma? Is that fine, house? So we'll take two more questions before we go. All right. I think this is very important. The question says, a Muslim, a Muslim is nice, even nicer than a Christian brother or sister. Does it mean I can date him or her? All right, so it's always a no. I'm sorry, maybe our mindset is different, but it's always a no to, for me. So I would say the way Muslim is being brought up is different from the way you are being brought up. Even some Muslims will go to the extent of, okay, let's say because of you, they start going to church. Some people, is actually a lie. After the wedding, they are giving you that again, that I'm go there, go and start uh, all these things that they used to do. So I would advise you that even sometimes, okay, so a man of God used to say that, okay, if you want to get, it's always good you invite someone so that you'll be hearing the same thing, so that you, you follow the same right pattern. Or even people who are in the same church, 
because you've been listening to the same thing. So that by the time you are trying to relate with each other, one person won't be off. And the other person won't be angry that, why are you talking to me like this? The other person will know that, ah, we are listening to the same thing now. How about now? I ought to understand. And if you need more clarity on things like that, that is why you have the same man of God. So always go back to and ask questions. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so in addition to that, I would like to share from my own story. At home, back home, I have a family friend. They are Muslim. And trust me, they are very nice people. Like, they are so nice. They are the next to go person to me, especially when my dad died. And they happen to have a son who is my friend. He is a very good person. You know, when I say very good, so the last time I went home, the mother said, hey, hey, can you pay? I'll say it in Yoruba, I'll transcribe in your English. She said, hey, hey, can you pay all that? I don't know if she's Muslim, but I don't know if she's Muslim. I don't know if she said it. I did as if I did not hear. I was shouting, yes, ma. She said, all that I'm going to go to my son, ma. Can you pay all that? That's the Muslim. Oh, they are more and they have money. Oh, they are more and they like me. Yes, they like me. So everything is just way but everything I need to pray for is settled. So I said, Ah, ma, COVID be a pain. Touch your tower. Oh, yeah, to. I was telling her that how we were brought up is different. Our faith is different. I need a man that can agree with me on certain matter when we are in relationship. I need someone that can hold my hands and pray. I need someone that we can join faith together, knowing we are praying on one thing. So it's different. Even though he is uh, like a very good option, he's not the best. Some people say that he's good doesn't mean he's the one for you. That he's actually, he's actually seems like he's the best doesn't mean he's the one for you. So you, in this case, is a no-no for a Christian lady because you never can tell what you face in your marriage. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I so regarding raising your children, there's no way there will still not be clashes. Even if later the man says the child should be going to church. But at the same time, you still want his child to follow some of his doctrines. There's no way. And already there are so many issues already when you um getting married. Why do you want to add another one to that? To the matter already. There's, there are, you face different things already in the marriage. So just take that one off. I know that, okay, both of us are going the same direction. And I think that's what that's yeah, they, they have said it all. But I will still add, as our man of God he always said, say that except if you are Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit that we change that person. It's not easy. It's not easy. Culture is, everything is different. Maybe now you are speaking in tongues. Person says, ah, we think that something is wrong with you. <laughs> really, the mentality is, is so, it's so different. It's so different, I'm telling you. It's so different. So that's... You know, issue will not come up because it's marriage lifetime. Remember that this is marriage we are talking about. It's not just a joke. Just be careful. Be very, very careful. That is what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I also have a relatable experience. She said something like, when you have the mindset that you would, the person would be a convert or something, but you'll be shocked when you get to their house and they will tell you to do ablution. My mom came from a Christian home, married a Muslim. Oh my, because, okay, so married a Muslim. So when she got to my father's house, they literally gave her a blush, um, um, kettle to do ablution and named her Miriam. <laughs> That's the first thing that I had the mindset that, okay, uh, over time, maybe we change. My dad is late now. He did not become a Christian till he passed on. And let me tell you, the scripture says that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. We have issues like it's, it is nothing so detailed like that. It's not deep. But then, if it were not to be that, maybe some of us had a changed mindset, met, had an encounter and everything. It might not be this funny. That some of us chose my dad's part. Some of us chose my mom's part. And I realized that on some things we don't agree. And it's not supposed to be. So it is safer to marry someone, from, or someone of your faith and um, I think Sister Dami said something that you should listen to the same thing. And I really want to make reference to a couple in this house. That's Mr. and Mrs. Oke. Can we jam our hands together for them? Amen. Before they got married, they were attending this church together, grew together, and fed from the same table. And trust me, they are doing very well. No matter how young their marriage is, we can see that it is a very good example of what we are talking about. That's it. So, and the scripture also said something that, Marry only from the household of your father. 
the scripture was not specific about maybe a religion or something, but it's saying that in the cycle that you all belong to, that's where you should marry from. And if you take, see the likes of, I think, Jacob, all of them, they went back to their father's house, maybe their cousin and everything, to go and marry. That's, it, 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 is, it is not saying that's religion, but it's a um, literary example of why you should marry from your household. So I think this, we have answers. Some of us that are, have uh, Muslim crushes and all oh, that. We have answers to our questions now. It is safer. The person might be very nice. I like the question. It says that the person is nicer. You may see a brother in church that is not so mushy, that is, but then it does not justify the fact that it will draw you back in your faith and it is safer to just marry from your father's household, which is the household of faith. All right. Can we take the last question, please? I want to create a scenario. I'm, I'm this type of person. So I think you would be help. I need you to do justice to this question. And I believe many of us are in this situation, and I'm, I'm not left out. So this is why the question interests me. <laughs> I've already gone out of the number of questions I should take. So the question says that, it's, is it ideal for a sister to propose or ask a brother out? <laughs> and then this time around, I want Bishop to also <laughs> answer that question. Because I'm so bad, I can, I, can, I can always tell somebody if I like them, I'll go. <laughs> I will walk up to you and tell you that I love you. Uh, and I will not be, I will not cut corners. I will not use investors move. I will be very straight about it. So I want to know if I've been doing wrong things. It, it doesn't happen all the time. Most times it happens when I'm very convinced. And I'm being very open now because I know that some of us even do way more than that. So can you please help us to scrutinize that question and break it down? Thank you. Okay. No, I am panelist. Go All first. Right. I want Bishop Praise to come God. In. Thank you. Okay, I won't. As a person, Adam Lola will not. All right. So I said that because I don't know some people. Awesome. Some people <laughs> even used to say, um, yeah, I think you can even see it from my voice. But aside from that, I cannot. My mommy and my dad, they did not train me like that. My elder ones, they did not explain that to me. My bishop did not tell me that. My mama, last time I checked, she, if some people do some things in this church, I'll be like, is that how Bishop taught you? Is that how mama taught you? Because I cannot. I'm surprised you walk up to some, someone and say, marry me with ring, actually. No, no, no. Okay, so this question is like with ring. But in this situation, the okay. picture I just created is okay. like, maybe I like somebody. I just tell them that. Even like if you me. like, you're a lady now. Calm down. All right. Cool. And also, mama used to say, that I, I think it was our last, last relationship says that there is a way you position yourself for a man to notice that you actually like them. Not like you walking up to him and telling him, hi, how do you even want to say it? Hi, John, I like you so much. Come on. Okay. I think it's positioning. All right. I feel like from the, even from the Bible, you see that most times um, the father will say the servant should go and look for the lady, a lady somewhere for the house for the for his son. So um, and the Bible also says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So <laughs> if you know my value, if you know my worth, I don't know why I should be the one proposing. You are supposed to want to quickly keep me at home and just ring it and just stay at home, not for me to be hoping and looking and thinking. That means you are not sure yourself of this, who this you are. are slicing me. <laughs> But at the same time, don't take your husband to be your boyfriend. It's Shakarasha. Okay. Minister Sometimes I feel for ladies. I feel for women. I don't know why. It's, maybe, I'm like it's crying only, for you. It's only men that ask for. Ask for marriage. Ask for hands in marriage or relationship. But it's, I don't know what I... Can I call it the nation or generation from generation? Why is only only men? Only men will say, I want to marry you. Woman cannot say that. If you look at that, it looks as if it's not balanced. It means it's only men that has authority. But we cannot say, do anything. But I won't say that it's right or wrong. But I feel for women. You see someone you, you want to marry. You just have, have your love. You just keep it in chest. You know? Hey. <laughs> it's just, hey. you know, somebody will be dying for love inside. 
No, I'm telling you, if you can change this, it's not only men. I am a man. No, no. So anyway, I can't. That's why I say I don't want to say much. But I feel, is this someone you love? Where can you? Hey, let me know. Do I see if I'm some, you know? Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. All right. Oh my God. So it's, I think it's Sister Oli, uh, Sister Oli, Sister IJ that came to pump up my balance. shoulder a little balance. bit. In as much as she still did not agree with that fact. And I think majority carried the vote. However, please can, can we give uh, Bishop a mic so I can. All right, sir. All right, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's do it a little louder. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So I'll make an attempt to speak. It's Women's Day. Um, so the fact is that in some culture, it is the woman that marries the man. So if it happens anywhere, like in India, you literally have to save money as a woman to marry a man. If you don't know that, you would think that Life ends with your culture. If you go wider, you know that it's not only, it's not a routine that the woman should be the one asking. However, you are not in India. So let's remember that even though they do it in a culture, we are not in that culture. Does that mean those that do it are wrong? No. It is culture. Culture is not scripture. Culture is culture. Scripture is scripture. We must not make culture become scripture. What happens is that there are certain things that informs why a man is better to be the one to ask you out. One of it is that the way man or men or male man, whichever, wherever this is being watched, <laughs> you know that's important now. <laughs> it's important to know why the male man should be the one to ask out. The male man is designed to be responsible. To be responsible. The woman is designed to receive the response. So if both of us are on that same plane, it will make life difficult. So what I mean by that is that there is such a thing called ego. Ego. Can, can we be a little more orderly? It makes a lot of sense that we, if we receive you as guests, treat yourself as a guest so that we can enjoy ourselves, you know? So, it's important to see that the man has ego. If you come asking him, if he's not a Christian man, he will take advantage of you. So, is it right or wrong? Scripture tells us categorically that all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. If you do it, you have not sinned, but the effect might not be beneficial for you. So if you do it to the... I know of three women. In fact, one led this man to Christ and told him, I believe you are my husband. And they are married now for at least, if I'm not mistaken, nothing less than 17 years. Very happily married. So it has happened before. Scripture, whenever scripture does not say anything, ha, don't say ha, ha. Mm -mm. Say what scripture says. Scripture says all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. If you get it wrong, you will suffer on your own. But if you get it right, it's not terrible. But I will, I will think that you are more smart to be suggestive. Suggestions like, if the man is someone that respects someone else, you are liking this brother, tell the person he, he respects. So, for example, someone is liking our beloved Minister Shili, crushing over. Don't go and meet him like that because if he says no, you will be too embarrassed to stay in church when he starts to date somebody else. Yeah, you won't want to see him date anybody else. In fact, you just see you are not going to church again. What's wrong? Nothing. But it is because your crush is crushing you more than you prepared for. So I'm of the opinion that we should be smart about it. Tell the person she laid the fast to. Tell me. I will even do a better job than you going to go and meet him. When I finish working on him, he won't see another person. But the problem is that it is lack of control that is making you want to bear. 
calm down. There are ways to go about it. You might be liking a devil and not know. Mm -hmm. You might be liking a wrong family and not know. You might become a widow too soon because you were the one that asked for it. So some of these things deny you of your rights, your feminine rights, your feminine authority, simply because you lack control. I recommend, if you truly like this person and you are not being covetous, tell his pastor. Tell someone he respects. They will know how to land it for you. It's not terrible. Ruth uh, leaned on Boaz's leg. Uh, she didn't say, marry me, but she was the one that said, why is your leg dusty? Ah, why is nobody washing your leg? And then she's the, Boaz, the Holy Ghost, said to him, this is your wife. So don't go straight, otherwise you can forfeit all the benefits of being a woman to just because you are the one jumping. No, relax. There's a way to go around it, and you still get the same results. I hope that answers our question. God bless you. Bishop, please. All right, thank you very much, our panelists. Thank you for coming around. Um, I pray that the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you can step down, please. Thank you. Please, let's jam our hands together for our panelists, please.